Parents aside, if I were to construct a Mount Rushmore of the biggest influences in my life, it would begin and end with just one guy, George Carlin. I can distinctly remember listening to him for the first time when I was a child and thinking out loud, I want to be just like him. He was hilarious, well-spoken, honest, fearless, and above all else, confident. He was like a superhero to me. He made me laugh so hard that I would often have tears streaming down my cheeks. It was one of the greatest feelings I've ever had to this day, laughing so uncontrollably that it hurt your gut. I used to commute from London to Sarnia for a year and a half. That's 40 hours a month I spent on that bloody highway, and I can't say I enjoyed a second of it, but I credit George for keeping me sane. If I had a bad day, which was rather common, I would throw on his material to make me feel better. I memorized nearly all of his routines and still couldn't resist listening to them over and over. He had this unique ability to make you think. He could have never told a joke in his entire life, and he would have still been an extremely prolific public speaker. He was very compelling. Got the gears turning. There's something genuine about the man with the rough Brooklyn accent, something I always connected to. Made me feel comfortable. Perhaps it was the fact he was such an advocate of free speech or the fact that he was always willing to speak the truth, whether we wanted to hear it or not. But I believe what I admired the most was his work ethic. For 50 years, yes, 50 years, can you imagine that? He was at the top of his game. Some are fortunate enough to spend even a few moments at the top of the mountain. Hell, he practically resided there. When he passed away in 2008... It felt as if somebody ripped out one of my vital organs and threw it in a dumpster. There was that instant gap. The world was suddenly less funny. I guess death is the one thing that will always be inevitable. I just didn't want to accept it. I have a picture of him on the top of my bookshelf. It sits there as a reminder to never stop laughing, to never stop telling the truth, to never stop questioning. I recognize that these are just words, and they can never do justice to the man that completely changed my life. But every once in a while, it's simply nice to say thank you. And there are a couple things about me you ought to know first. I drive kind of recklessly, I take a lot of chances, I never repair my vehicles, and I don't believe in traffic laws. <laughs> so, yeah. so I tend to have quite a high number of traffic accidents. And last week, I either ran over a sheep, or I ran over a small man wearing a sheepskin coat. <laughs> and I don't know because I didn't stop. <laughs> I do not stop when I have a traffic accident. Do you? Huh? Do you? No, you can't. Hey, who has time? <laughs> not me. I hit somebody, I run somebody over, it's... I keep moving. Especially if I've injured someone. I do not get involved in that. I'm not a doctor. I've had no medical training. I'm just another guy out driving around looking for a little fun and I can't be stopping for everything. Well, let's just look at it logically. Let's be logical about it. If you do stop at the scene of the accident, all you do is add to the confusion. These people you ran over have enough troubles of their own without you stopping and making things worse. Leave these people alone. They've just been in a major traffic accident. <laughs> the last thing they need, the last thing they need is for you to stop and get out of your car and go over to the fire, because by now it is a fire, <laughs> and start bothering them with a lot of stupid questions. Are you hurt? <laughs> well, of course they're hurt. Look at all the blood. <laughs> You just ran over them with a ton and a half of steel. Of course they're hurt. Leave these people alone. Haven't you done enough? For once in your life, do the decent thing. Don't get involved. Well, in the first place, it's none of your business. None of your business. The whole thing took place outside of your car. Legally speaking, these people you ran over were not on your property at the time you ran them over. They were standing in the street that is city property. You are not responsible. If they don't like it, let them sue the city. And besides, it happened back there. It's over now. Stop living in the past. 